Hello everyone, what's up? It's Missy Dupop, and as some of you may know, I love making Fakemon. I have a whole playlist of videos that are me taking a look at my first Fakemon region I made years ago. I've started many new ones since then, but none of them have satisfied me. And to be honest, they're not that great, and that's okay. But in my time of making Fakemon, I've learned how others do it and found my own way too. Today, I'll do my best to teach you how to make your own Fakemon. I'll be making one and teaching you how I do it along the process. Anyway, let's get to it! I wanted to start off by saying that just because this is how I make my Fakemon doesn't mean that's how you have to do it. If you do something different, don't worry, you're not doing it wrong, so to say. There's no wrong way to be creative. Everyone has their own way to go about it. And this is my way. I also wanted to say that this is not, you know, the typical Pokemon art style. I have my own style when I draw Fikimon and, you know, draw in general. So if you're wanting to know how to draw in the Sugimori style, I'm sorry to inform you, this may not be the video for you. But if you guys would like me to make a video like that, please let me know down below in the comment section. But I will be teaching you how I generally make my Fikimon and hope that some of you can take bits and pieces away and make your own Fikimon. Anyway, let's finally get started. I always start with pencil and paper. I don't really have any way to draw digitally except the old keyboard and mouse, so most of my art is generally on paper. For this tutorial though, I will make a final digital version. That's later on though, I need to get back on topic. As you can see, I have some paper here in front of me. I always start off with doing some research. I know, so exciting. Research. <laughs> I know, it doesn't sound very excited, but it's a great way to help me come up with some process and stuff like that, you know. If it's for a Fakemon region, the Fakemon is, I'll do a lot of research. If I know what animals live in this region, what I might be able to do with them, you know, that kind of stuff. But since this is just some random Fakemon for no specific Fakemon region, I'm just going to use a random animal generator. So, let me go find one of those. So this is the animal generator we'll be using to decide what animal to base our Fikimon off of. The link to this website will be down below in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. If you want to use it when you're making your Fikimon, uh, it'll be there and you can use it. So we're going to go ahead, I have it set to all different kinds of species, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, birds, all that. And then the number of results will be three and we're going to choose our favorite one. Okay, so we're going to click submit. And then we scroll down. Ooh, we have we have options between a bobcat, a crested penguin, and an eastern lowland gorilla. I think I want to do the crested penguin. I think that would be fun, and I love penguins. Ooh, okay, so we're gonna do a crested penguin. Let's get started with this fakie month then. Wow, crested penguins are actually really cool. I spent a little bit of time doing some research, and I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I learned. There are actually multiple kinds of crested penguins, but today we're going to be focusing on a erect crested penguin. These penguins eat small crustaceans and squid. They live in southern New Zealand and typically lay two eggs, the second one being significantly larger than the first one. Now, you might be wondering, uh, okay, cool, why, why do we need to know this exactly? How, how is research helpful and why are you telling us about penguins? Well, because of this research, I'm gaining ideas for the design. Like maybe an egg incorporated somewhere into their design because their breeding and egg care techniques are unique among the penguin kind. I spend a large amount of time researching because it's important. It helps you get ideas for the concept and I heavily recommend you do this too. It just helps you gain some background knowledge and come up with design things. Even if it's just a quick little Wikipedia article read, I recommend it. I think it really helps out in my experience. Okay, so I also spend a large amount of time looking at reference images and have a few pulled up as I draw typically. And I recommend looking at other Pokemon that may be based off the same thing that you're basing your Fakemon off of, or other Fakemon that, you know, are based on the same thing. See if there's any ideas you could incorporate into your design. But don't just flat out copy a design. That's not cool, man. Now, I think it's finally time we get to the drawing stage. First up, it's time to start your sketches. I started off by just drawing the actual crested penguin. 
this tends to help me and work for me. Just drawing the actual animal or item before I add any Pokemon-like elements to it. And then, you know, I make- I add the Pokemon elements after I learn how to actually draw the animal or item. I decided the first thing I wanted to work on was the face, because that's an important part of a Pokemon. I decided I want this Pokemon to be a fire type, because the little eyebrow feather things looked like fire when I drew the penguin. I recommend doing this, looking at the traits of an animal slash item you're basing your Pokemon off of, and seeing if they remind you of anything, or any traits you can maybe exaggerate. I tried to go with a smoke design first as you can see, but it wasn't looking that great and it just didn't look right, so I went with some fire. If something doesn't look right, don't give up on your idea, just try it a different way. There are no bad ideas when it comes to the design process and brainstorming. I was having lots of trouble with the eye design, so I just, just did a quick little sketch of the face area so I could focus in on the eyes. I find this helps me to figure out certain parts of it. After I decided that the eye was good enough, I moved on to trying to figure out figure out what else I could do to make the design look a little bit more fiery. I brainstormed for a little bit and then decided it would look cool if there was fire on the flippers. I wanted this penguin to be literally on fire. I decided I wanted the fire to be on the back of the flippers and for this I would need a different angle. I would definitely try doing this if you're having trouble with something. Trying a different angle. It's just that simple. After I finally figured out what to do with the flippers, I changed a few things here and there and decided on a few of the colors. I like having a basic idea of what color I want to use before I sit down to color it, and then maybe I won't make any mistakes. But the coloring comes much later. I just want to say real quick that there are many ideas during the design process that don't work out. For example, I tried to make the flippers huge, but in the end I thought it looked awkward and scratched that idea. Another idea I had was an egg resting on this faking one's feet. I drew a quick sketch of the idea, but I didn't like it very much. It also looked awkward and kind of not thought through. But I did like the idea of the egg, so I kept that in mind. Like I said, there's no bad ideas when it comes to a concept design. If you don't like anything, if you don't like something, you just take it away. It's that simple. Next up, after I work on my concept sketching, I work on my Figimon's pose. I want it to look like it was mid-battle, in the middle of a jump, one leg sticking in the air, the other pushing it off the ground, propelling it. I may be getting ready for a fire punch, so I quickly got to work with that. Now, keep in mind this is just a rough sketch. I'll be making a final larger version of this later, you know, after this, that will hopefully look better. I decided to keep the idea of the egg, but change it up a little bit. Shake it up, you know? I decided the egg would be tucked under its wing. It would be protecting it from danger and keeping it warm. It looks really cramped though, and it was too small for me to work on the details. I'll definitely need to be fixing that in the final draft. After I finish this rough sketch, I tend to make many notes, arrows pointing all over the place, things to fix, change, or things I really like, as you can see here. <laughs> now, it's time for the final paper draft. It will be the same pose, just larger. And there we go, the final drawing is complete, line art and all. You can see I've changed a few things, like I added the spots under the eyes. Pretty much I just changed anything I thought might need changing, or added anything new where it was bland. You can do this to your Pokemon too, just look at it, see if there's any last minute changes you'd like to make, and go ahead and do them, you know? It's a good time to do it. Now, let's hop on over to the old computer. Alright, so I'm now drawing and coloring on my computer. I uploaded the photo as a base layer, and traced the Pokemon's line art, as you can see. Then, I started testing out different variations of the colors I have in mind, trying to find the perfect ones. When you are coloring your Pokemon, keep in mind that the art team colors their official Pokemon with less saturated colors. For example, take this red that's really bright, like in your face. So what they do is they make it a little duller, I guess, typically. It still may look bright, but it's just not so neon in your face. So I try to do that with my colors. This was my first time using the art program, I will admit though. So it took me way too long to try to figure out how to do that and just to color in general. As soon as I get the colors figured out, I get to coloring it. I want to save what it looked like as a finished product until the end, so I won't be showing any more of the art part of making Pokemon. 
Next up, it's time for the naming segment. When you name your Fakemon, get creative. Game Freak themselves use as many different languages when naming their Pokemon. They combine words, find root words, combine those words. They use synonyms, not to be confused with cinnamon. Or if it's based off an animal, go with the scientific name sometimes and create it off of that. Just make sure the name is easy to say, easy to roll off the tongue. I definitely had that problem when I made my first Pokemon region. Late la it evolves into that. Aluminiex is Magi or Seer. <laughs> One Seer Mag. That's what I'm gonna call it. That's the pronunciation I'm sticking to. And you're mean. <laughs> and uh, Okanasubasa. <laughs> well, that's a mouthful. The name I ended up going with for this Fakemon isn't that original, but that's okay. It still sounded cool in my opinion. Now is also a great time to figure out where your Pokemon lives, what they eat, if they have any relationship with other Pokemon, anything like that. Now is the time to figure it out. So now it's time to reveal my finished product. I hope you learned some tips and tricks for making your Fakemon from this video. Please, I'd love to know what you've come up with, what Fakemon you made with the help of this video down below in the comment section. Now, drum roll, please! <laughs> I present to you Flamagwen, a fire type. Flamagwen protect their eggs with their lives. Flamagwen eggs have to be consistently kept at a very hot temperature. The body temperature of Flamagwen help keep their eggs at the perfect temperature to hatch. Flamagwen have to be wary of their surroundings at all time because of their flaming flippers, tail, and head feathers. When they get into battle, they always tuck their eggs under their flippers so the eggs are not harmed. And here is the shiny version. Yeah, so there's that. This Pokemon loves to jump right into battle and will give you a good kick to the head if you're not behaving well. So, what do you think of the final product? I'm quite proud of this one. You could also go more in depth after this, figuring out stats and maybe evolutions, but I won't be doing that today. Uh, this is where I will be ending my How to Make Fakemon tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it taught you at least one new trick for creating your Fakemon. Let me know if it did down below in the comment section. If it did, or if you just enjoyed this video in general, or if you like Flamagoin, remember to like the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, first off, thank you so much. Second off, do you have the bell turned on for notifications? If not, TURN IT ON if you would like to. You'll never miss a video. You could be one of those people who comments, first down below in the comment section or whatever you know if you guys would like me to make more fakemon please let me know down below in the comments i really i really love making fakemon and if you guys want me to go more in depth making them maybe a fakemon region i'd love to let me know anyway i need to wrap this up i hope you all have a fantastic day this is missy doopop signing off see you all next time